Hey, good morning. Yep, still good morning. Good morning, Kathy. This is Chris from Homes in 719. I saw your email regarding uh, your condo over there in Briargate. And uh, normally when I see that question, I put together a short, try to be short, video uh, for you to take a look at so you see what I see. Um, and I back up some of my statements with facts um, so that you can see it and know that uh, I'm not just, you know, pulling this out of nowhere, thin air or, or an opinion. I'm actually trying to uh, give you some information based on uh, facts, uh, sales history, stuff like that. And by doing a video, you can watch it whenever you want. You can watch it back when you want to uh, share it with your friends and family if you need to do that. And, um, you know, it, it get to see all the stuff that I get to see. So uh, what I'll do here, I'm going to share my screen here in just a second. I'll go through what I'm seeing, what my uh, opinions are uh, relevant to some of your remarks there in your email. And uh, after you watch this, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me uh, and, and we can have a, a deeper discussion if you want. I got some other tools that uh, if we get further down the, the road, uh, does some more statistical math kind of stuff um, to really help uh, hone us in on where you need to be uh, in order to have a successful sale if you choose to do it this summer. So uh, with that, let me share my screen here after I can figure the right tab. And then I can show you what I am seeing. All right, so this first screen that uh, should be coming up here momentarily um, is from the Pikes Peak MLS, PPMLS. So it's the local MLS here that I work out of most of the time and will show us um, most of the data that we need to see. So uh, with that, I've got this search criteria <clears throat> set up to give us the search results that uh, if I go back over here and show you the criteria, um, we're looking at everything that's ever been sold anywhere for the last zero to 180 days, specifically targeted at your community. Um, so we're not in this search and this screen, we're not looking at anything beyond that. You can see there's five matches relevant to that search criteria. And then in here, much like you were saying um, for price point, we've got a bunch of stuff in here. Uh, unit 104, it looks like, was on the market for a while, and then they canceled it. And now it's back on the market again. And then um, the unit 204 was on the market and actually closed. So this, this data is the most telling, um, and it closed... Let's see here. What are we seeing? Uh, 313. If I move my face out of the way, you'll see that. Uh, 313 um, was the date that it closed, and it closed for exactly the list price. And if I go in here, let's just open this one real quick and go down. All right. No seller concessions uh, were reported. So uh, that is something that would be, you know, the 335 minus uh, would be the actual value to the seller. Um, and you can see the, the building here that it's looking at. And then if I go back uh, to the, whoops, wrong button. If I go back to the single line view, you can see uh, unit 201 is active on the market. Unit 203 is active on the market. Um, and there's some very telling information in here. So you were looking and saying, yep, uh, you were surprised to see four, 400 over the 400 mark in your community. Um, and I would say you are accurate with that remark. And uh, that is supported based on this right here. 70 days on market um, is where that house is at. And you can see that the uh, unit 104 is listed almost $100,000 less and uh, has seven days on market and it hasn't sold yet. So uh, you can see the configuration. It's a 221. All of these are. And if I open up uh 104 here and we take a look at the inside of that one um we can see some photos of the outside all right so they're packing up here not great photos um but you can see kind of what that unit looks like on the inside what kind of condition it's in um for that so this looks like an older unit right i think you're in the newer side i got a feeling but uh, this unit's in pretty good shape, really. So when it comes to value, unless it's dramatically different in age or layout, um, it typically doesn't shift the value too much. So, you know, if you're looking at a 1970s versus, you know, 2023, 
um, building, then you might see some differences. And you can see here that one I was looking at was built in 2006. Um, some of these newer ones, 2021, um, I got a feeling you're probably in the newer side. Um, and that's where these, these ones are trying to get more money for them because they're newer um, and maybe a little, a little prettier. Um, so if you look at that, the remodel of the newer ones, a little bit more open architecture, um, maybe some newer appliances, instant hot water, a little more open feel potentially, All right? Uh, definitely style and architecture wise, something that buyers are willing to pay for. I do not feel like they are willing to pay a hundred thousand dollars more for it. Um, I just don't see that ever working. <laughs> um, you know, if you're thinking about you as a buyer and you were looking in this community and you had the difference between this one and the other one we were just looking at, would you be willing to pay a hundred thousand dollars more for it? I don't think so. Not likely. Um, you might be willing to pay 20,000 more for it. Um, you know, cause it's really, it's, it's, you meet your style criteria, but when you're talking about, they both have two bedrooms, they both have two bathrooms, they both have a one car garage attached. They're very similar square feet, um, in the same location not likely that you're going to want to cough up a hundred grand uh, just for the privilege of having a slightly prettier one. Um, you know, so, and, and I believe that's what's going to happen when the appraiser comes along and looks at these, is he's going to say, there's no way. Right. So one of the things I try to do then is try to dig a little bit deeper um, and, and try to see if, what kind of data is out there? Where do these agents come up with a number? Now it is, quite possible that the seller said, I don't care what you think it's worth. I want to sell it for this. Um, and the agent's going to list it at whatever the seller chooses to list it for, despite what objective evidence they might have to say that's crazy. All right. Um, so if I go in here and look at, uh, this is a different search, just so you're, you're clear. Um, I changed it and, and created a, a different look here. So I'm looking again back 180 days. I'm not looking at active. And the only reason I'm not looking at active is it's pretty much the same thing you were just seeing on the other screen. I want to look at the ones that are under contract or pending, sold, withdrawn, canceled, because this is where the value really is going to be for the appraiser. Um, to, if they were looking at it, they're going to say, what sold? What was the consumer willing to pay for a property like that near there? All right. Actives tend to give you an indication of where the market could be going, but until it's closed out, the um, the appraiser is going to put less value to that number than they're going to do on the sold data. So uh, here you can see I've asked for condos and townhomes just out of curiosity. I wanted to see them both. Um, same kind of criteria. One car uh, garage because I wanted only one cars. Um, here I've asked for two miles from your place. And despite doing two miles and 180 days out, I only have six matches. So I had to keep going out bigger and bigger and bigger and further and further back until I got some more data so we could look at it. Um, you know, normally, especially in the last 180 days, I would say the data is going to be a little skewed. Um, so I'd rather have something way sooner, like last 30 days. It'd be great if I can find that um, and way closer. That's why I started originally with just your community. I wanted to see if I could come up with three sold comps in the last 30 days in your community, then we would have exactly what the appraiser is going to want to see. And that value, the data that the value of that data is going to be held significantly higher than anything else. But in this case, if I go to the results, um, you can see here, um, I do have some a couple of townhomes in here. I have a couple of condos in here. Um, these, some of these are two stories and some of these are ranches. Ranches typically sell for more. So uh, we do have to take that into account. And you can see the condos are actually, um, you know, your community. And this one's from 2006. Well, it's an older one. This is 2007. So it's an older one. So we really don't have a sold really close to yours. So it does provide a bit of um, questions as to what those new ones are actually going to sell for. And, um, you know, if we look here at all two bedrooms, all one, one car, very similar square feet. 
you can see the days on market here, 38, 6, 3, 12, 25. And then when they closed, if I go over a little bit further, sold dates, you know, here we've got one, 313, 411. Those two are going to be very held very high uh, in regard from the uh, appraiser. And you can see the sold price, 335, 339. So my professional opinion there is that the two that we see over 400,000 likely are not going to sell for that. Um, if they hold out and wait till summer, when we really start seeing the U.S. military moving, maybe we'll start seeing that. We'll, we might start seeing it. But um, once again, that's a pretty steep um, I don't want to call it penalty, but penalty for the buyer to spend $100,000 more to have that unit versus the older one. So, um, you know, maybe between now and the time that you sell, we'll have some better comp data in here, some better souls and have some, um, be able to nail it down. And, and the other tool that I mentioned earlier will help us regardless. Um, but I'm not going to go through that analysis because it takes a, a bit more time to do it, uh, to, to drill into that. And, and I use that maybe the week that we're going to go under, um, go on the market. So we really get the most current data and spend a lot of time trying to analyze everything. That's when I'll spend that time to do that. But just for this little video here, this will get us 99% of the way there. Um, this is a different tool that I also have. Uh, this is, so I've got it tuned to um, the zip code 80920 and condos, right? And there have a little proprietary algorithm in here that, that looks at how hot is the market? Is it a buyer's market or seller's market? And their math, their algorithm is showing it's right about 50. Don't look at this 50%. You can see here that the buyer's market really starts kicking in around 30 and then, you know, goes up from there. Um, the last couple of years when the market was crazy hot and everyone was paying more than, you know, 10, 15% over list price, we would see this needle back like over 90. So it kind of gives you an idea. Um, it did come up to 51 from last month when it was 46. So that gives you a little bit of insight. You can see the median price of condos, 80920, isn't at 430 mark, um, but I'm not really seeing that in the data. So uh, it's kind of interesting. It might be somewhere else in that, um, outside of that two miles from you. And if that's the case, the appraiser probably is not gonna use it as value. Um, so there might be some new builds going on further away in 80920 that is showing that price, but, the appraiser for the most part is going to stop looking at two miles out. Um, and that's just kind of like a rule of thumb. Um, I have been successful going further than that before with appraisers, but normally they're not going to, especially if they got sold data to use, which they do have. So, you know, with that average days on market 92. So, you know, three months ish on market to sell right now. Like I said, though, the market in the last 90 days has been a little weird. Um, having a few houses on the market and working with a few different buyers. Uh, it's it's neighborhood to neighborhood, house to house uh, specific. As far as how long they're going to stay in the market, there is no uh, broad brush you can paint the market with right now. So price decreases. 33% of the houses that are listed for sale in 80920 are condos. Um, have to take a price decrease before they sell. That's about normal. Um, that would be considered a normal market. So nothing alarming there. Um, oops, excuse me. Sorry about that. Um, you know, it's one of those things, though, you definitely don't want to list your property too high and do a lot of price reductions. And the reason for that is you miss out on a lot of buyers. So it's better to be uh, not listed at actual value, but maybe a little bit below so that you get a lot of showings, you get a lot of activity, you get maybe a competitive market, multiple offers kind of thing. And then it would be bid back up to the actual value of the house um, or the condo in this case. So that's kind of uh, the general rule of thumb there. You can see relisted everything um, in the data set that they had sells and it gets relisted. Um, inventory, again, still really low, six. So not not crazy there. Um, the rest of the stuff down here, really, we don't need to look at um, from that standpoint. But um, you can see, like, this is the median list price of condos in 80920 since back in um, April of 2018. And it's gone up and down and all over the place, but pretty much flat, right? I mean, you got, what, four, 
what is this? Three 90 day average, 394, 90 day average over here, 396. So almost flat um, appreciation in that market for condos, despite the crazy housing market we had. So that might give you some indication as, you know, should I hold on to it longer and, you know, and maybe the house value will go up. It, it doesn't look like it will uh, based on historical data, especially when you take into account that COVID land in most zip codes and I mean, went absolutely bonkers. So um, this curve goes way higher in some of the zip codes when you flip it to houses. In fact, if I go up here and just flip it to houses in 80920, let's see how that changes it. So yeah, you can see the market action index is much higher. And then the, you know, the median price back in 2018 was 413. And on a house in 80920 is now 581. So the appreciation uh, that we would, that people were experiencing were on single family 80920, not condos based on this data. So, you know, if you're, like I said, you're thinking about, ah, keep it for another year, maybe it'll go up in value not really seeing that <laughs> so not seeing data that supports that um that premise you know um at all so you can take that and use that for whatever you want um but yeah that's you know kind of where you're at right now uh, in your in your community there it will be interesting to see between now and, and maybe june um you know how that will pan out June, July is usually the peak markets that uh, we have here in Colorado Springs is when most of the houses are for sale, most of the condos are for sale. We have a lot of U.S. military moving in and out, and that is normally the best time of the year uh, to obtain the best price in terms when trying to sell a property. So, um, yeah, there you go. If you watch this and you have some questions, reach out to me. Um, like I said, feel free to share this with your friends and family, um, you know especially if you know somebody else that maybe it's even uh, interested in selling. I'd love for them to see this. There's a few more of these on my website um, or excuse me, on my YouTube channel um, where I, I'm going to post this one on there too. Um, you know, you know, note, there's no actual address, right? So you don't have to worry about that. But um, yeah, it's just an, an interesting way for uh, sellers to take a look at that and say, oh, you know, this, this is uh, valuable information. I hope you found it, found it to be that way. And uh, give me a call, shoot me an email if you have more questions, 719-212-4911. Again, 719-212-4911. Talk to you later. Bye.